The Last Guard, Book One of the Southern Star by K. J. Taylor. Chapter One, The Guardsman. The body appeared on the streets of Lorenwi early one morning. Nobody knew how it had come to be there or why. Red on dawn patrol was the one to find it. As the morning advanced and people gathered to see what was going on, he kept his place beneath the hanging corpse and kept anyone from coming too close. Other guards appearing on the scene quickly formed a ring, pushing people back if need be and stolidly ignoring the questions that came their way. Red stayed where he was, nervously running a finger over his moustache, and waited until his commander finally arrived. The ring of guards parted to let him through, and Red straightened up and saluted smartly. Sir! Commander Talman, a middle-aged man with short grey hair, nodded back. At ease, Sergeant. Tell me everything. Red relaxed slightly. There's not much I can tell, sir. Me and Ranolf were coming along the street from the south end around dawn and found it just like this. Talman glanced at Red's partner, who was standing nearby. Nothing's been touched? No, sir, said Ranolf. Me and Red here took one look at it and sounded the alarm. We've stayed here ever since. Good job. Talman took a few steps back and looked up at the body. Someone had tied a noose around its neck and hung it from a post holding a sign with a picture of a white snake on it. It was impossible to tell if the victim was a man or a woman. The clothes were baggy, and the head was covered by a sack. "'Could be a suicide, sir,' Ranulph put in helpfully. "'Don't be daft,' said Red. "'What kind of suicide ties their own hands and feet together?' "'Right,' Ranulph muttered. Talman took his helmet off and scratched his head. "'Were there any witnesses?' "'No, sir,' said Red. "'We've talked to the tavern owners. None of them heard a thing. Mind you, it was spring day yesterday. Bit of a noisy night, sir.' Unbelievable, said Talman. Someone hanged some poor bastard, probably alive, outside the sign of the White Serpent on Spring Day Eve, and nobody hears anything? Nobody comes outside and sees something? It must have been put here later, sir, said Red, after closing. I touched it when we found it to see if it was still alive, like. I'd swear it was still a bit warm, sir. Ha! Huh. Talman put his helmet back on. I know these places. They don't close until nobody wants another drink. On Spring Day Eve, that means never. Still, you did well here. We'll get this taken down and have another chat to the innkeep. See if we can't find anyone who can help. Yes, sir, said Red. Oh, go and find us a ladder then, said Ranulph. Red smirked at him. Don't worry about it, I got this. He made a small jump and caught hold of the signpost. Holding it with one hand, he drew his dagger with his other hand and soared through the rope. The body thudded onto the street, making several people jump back. Red dropped to the ground beside it. Probably should take a look at the face. He loosened the noose and pulled it off. The bag over the head hadn't been tied on, so he removed it. He grimaced when he saw the face underneath. The victim was a man, and it was immediately obvious that the hanging had indeed been what killed him. His face had turned an ugly shade of purple, the eyes bulging red with burst blood vessels. The mouth was jammed open in a final gasp for air, and the rope had left a vicious-looking bruise just under the jaw. Ye gods, Red mumbled. Talman shook his head in disgust. Take the poor bastard to the temple and ask the priest to let us know if any of his relatives show up. Yes, sir. Someone had already brought a stretcher, so Red rolled the body onto it. He jerked his head toward Ranolf. Come on, get over here and give me a hand. Reluctantly, Ranolf came over and lifted one end of the stretcher. Ugh, let's get this over with. Right. Red shifted his grip on his own end and waited until the other guards had cleared the way. Fortunately, Lorenwi's sun temple wasn't far. Ranolf huffed along with his end of the stretcher, hampered by his impressive gut. I'm getting too old for this, he muttered. Red said nothing. He had spent his entire adult life as a guard ever since he had joined up at the age of sixteen. Years spent patrolling the streets, chasing thieves and murderers, and once or twice helping to put down a riot. But he had never seen anything like this. Murder was one thing, but the sight of someone left hanged like this, there for everyone to see, had shaken him more than he was going to admit. Not wanting to look at the corpse again, Red kept his attention on the people moving in around him to get a good look. It was the usual assortment of people you'd find on the streets at this time of day, mostly traders who had been on their way to work, and kids who were too young to have a job they cared about. Further back, though, someone caught his eye. A man slightly taller than those around him and very thin. He was bald and had a strip of cloth covering his eyes, but his head was turned toward Red. For a moment, Red looked straight toward the stranger, and even though there were no eyes to see, he had the uncomfortable feeling that the man was looking straight at him. He shook himself and went on toward the temple. Fear and foreboding didn't matter, not when he had a job to do. He and Renolf reached the temple with several other guards around to keep people away. Someone must have already alerted the priests, because a group of them came out to meet them. "'Where did this one come from?' one of them asked. "'He was found this morning to Red hanged outside the White Serpent Inn.' The priest's face twisted with disgust. "'Who would do something like that?' "'Someone I'd like to get my hands on before he does it to someone else,' Red said grimly. "'Can you take care of this poor sod and let us know if his family turns up?' "'Of course.' The priest gestured at two of his fellows. "'Take him to the vaults.' 
Red gladly handed over the stretcher and stood by respectfully with Ranulph while it was carried inside. Right, said Ranulph once the priests had gone. Back to business as usual, I suppose. Yeah, Red rubbed his eyes. He had been up since before dawn and his shift wasn't even close to finished yet. Let's get back to the tavern. Maybe we can grab something to eat while we're at it, Ranulph said as they set out. Good idea. Red and Ranulph settled into their usual pace on the way back, walking side by side, always on the lookout for trouble, as they had done on every patrol they had shared over the years. Since Ranulph was older, Red had been paired with him to learn, just as younger guards always were. At least that was the idea, but the reality was that Red looked much more interested than Ranulph did. Fat and balding, Ranulph had been a guard for nearly thirty years, and nothing seemed to interest him much about the job these days. Red kept pace with him, frowning. While his partner tended toward the paunchy, Red tended toward the muscular. Wide-shouldered and stocky with big hands, he wore his carrot-coloured hair short like most guards did to keep himself from overheating under his helmet. His moustache, on the other hand, was more than bushy enough to make up for it. Back at the tavern, most of the other guards had dispersed and gone back to their proper duties. Commander Talman, though, had waited behind. Red saluted smartly. Job's taken care of, sir. Talman offered him a rare smile. Well done. You handled all this very well, Sergeant. Red was careful not to let his satisfaction show. Do you want me, to, me and Renolf to talk to the innkeepers again? No, I took care of that while you were gone. You two can go and start making inquiries elsewhere. Yes, sir, said Red. He was glad. Interrogating witnesses was never much fun, especially the second time around. Got it, sir, said Renolf. He grinned at Red. Come on, let's go and get going, mate. You've run the show enough for one day. Red flushed. Right, right. See you later, sir. Once they were out of sight, Ranulph slowed to his usual pace. Now then, there's no need to go running off ahead, he said. We ain't in a hurry. Reluctantly, Red fell back to join him. You didn't have to go telling me off in front of the commander like that, he complained. Ranulph chuckled. Red, I like you and all, but you've got to learn to calm down a bit. The job is just a job, and you'll do better if you treat it that way. Will I, said Red. We're supposed to be protecting people, Ranulph. That's something I'm always going to treat seriously. But it ain't something you'd do better by rushing about, right, said Ranulph. He stumped along reflectively. You know, I heard after you ran off with that winged man or whatever he was, you came back different. He tell you you had a mission or something? Something from Griffiths or whatever? Red started. What? No, oh, Clover and those Griffiths just needed someone to help them on the journey. You know, making food and tidying up and whatnot. There wasn't anything like that. But he was the winged man, wasn't he? He's ran off wholly in that. Didn't he have anything important to tell you? Not really, said Red. He squared his shoulders. My dad was the one who taught me it was important to be loyal. Loyalty's my family code and has been for centuries, that's what he said. Yeah, but wasn't your dad a traitor? Ranulph sounded suspicious. Lady Isleen had him killed for... Shut up. Red said it firmly, but not angrily. I was fourteen. No one told me nothing. All I know is my dad never would have done something like that. You know how Griffiners are. They do things like that and say whatever they think us commoners will believe. Yeah, Ranulph sighed. It's just, you ought to be careful about that stuff. I heard some things from people, other guards and whatnot, saying someone from your family can't be trusted. After Eagleholm and all. Red skull. Look, my dad wasn't from that side of the family. That was my mum, and she died when I was tiny. I got nothing to do with any of that. Yeah, but you still call yourself Re Oh, stop it, Red snapped. Wasn't your dad a stable boy? Shovel and ox shit doesn't sound like a noble heritage to me. Ranulph winced. Low blow, mate, low blow. Look, said Red... No one's going to judge me by where I came from. They're going to judge me by what I do. And I'm going to make it something to be proud of. That's a promise. Like what? asked Ranulph. Like... Red scratched his ear. Like I'm going to catch the son of a bitch who hangs that man. Are you now? said Ranulph. Yeah, I'm going to get him, Red vowed. And when I do, he's going to wish I'd never been born. <laughs>